Hi, it's Ian from Recoil. For the last two years, I've been reporting on the war in Ukraine. There's a couple of reasons for that. The first off being that this conflict is going to define the nature of warfare for at least the next two decades. The second being that generally, when it comes to armed conflict, mainstream media reporting sucks. So hence, I've been embedding with some of the units uh, of the Ukrainian armed forces. And due to relationships with them that I've developed over the last couple of years, we've been granted exclusive access to a subunit armory in, uh, let's just say, the eastern part of Ukraine, in an area that's been subject to continuous bombardment. Now, because of that, obviously, I can't say exactly where I am or what unit this armory belongs to, but we're going to see firsthand just what kit they've been using. You want to see inside the arms room? All right, let's go. All right, the first two guns we come to are in the support weapons room and good old 50 cal M2 Browning. And uh, right next to it is a Mark 19 40 millimeter automatic grenade launcher. Now, the other, one of the other grenade launchers we have is this, which is a Croatian multi-barrel 40 millimeter. And uh, the guys really like this for lightweight and portability. Uh, obviously Freedom Easter eggs and 50 cal ammunition all over the place. And in the corner, uh, we have a lone RPG-7. Um, the RPG doesn't see a whole lot of use in this unit just because everybody's transitioned over to, um, to Western equipment. So the RPG over there is kind of a relic. There is a more modern RPG in this case over here, which is an Airtronic produced in the United States. And that one is updated with a bunch of Picatinny rails, which means you can use it at night. Um, obviously, fairly well provisioned with ammunition. As I mentioned, this unit has transitioned over to Western Small Arms almost exclusively. And you can see on the rack behind us that there are a number of different variants of Western uh, rifles, starting off with, hey Marty, Daniel Defense. One of your guns is over here, at least several of your guns are over here. And uh, these are all 14.5s, with the exception of a couple of SBRs in the rack. Right next to it, it was Scar, uh, Scar 16. And again, very highly re regarded by the guys who are using them. There are two Scars, let's see, so much for the Ugg boots. Um, the other rifle that was really appreciated by the troops over here is the CZ Bren 2. And anybody who's rocked one of these will know what a great rifle it is. Um, again, mostly 14.5s. This one's obviously missing muzzle device because it's going to be threaded, it's threaded for a can. There's a couple of suppressed weapons in here, uh, but the majority of them are wearing muzzle devices. Okay, that's it for the majority of the rifles. Um, there, I have seen a couple of tactical tuners in here. Um, the FN2000 is really appreciated as well uh, for its compact nature, particularly when it comes to CQB. So let's take a look at what else is on the shelves here. Okay, as far as machine guns go, we've got a combination of the old and new, uh, and you really can't go wrong with a trusty old PKM. In this case, it's been modded with a pick rail and has an EOTech mounted on it. PKM's awesome medium machine gun, probably the best one out there, until you get to the brand new, sexy, and very, very Gucci uh, H&K MG5. These have recently been put into service over here, and they come with the optic sight. They're a little bit heavier than the PK, obviously chambered in 762 by 51 rather than by 54R, but a great machine gun and uh, capable of an awful, laying down an awful lot of suppressive fire. Of course, no arms room would be complete without somebody's ridiculously short uh, SBR. In this case, it's, I think it's like an eight inch Daniel Defense. And uh, yeah, also an awful lot of um, noise and not a whole lot of effect. But at the same time, I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of it. As far as handguns go, everybody has pretty much settled on, in this unit at least, is the pretty much ubiquitous Glock 17. Um, there's a mixture of Gen 5s and uh, Gen 4s in this box here. And these are usually issued to drivers, guys who are running support weapons like MGs um, and 40 millimeters. We've got a fairly eclectic collection of grenades ranging from old Soviet F1s like this. And actually that's even older, that's a precursor to the F1 through to more modern American versions. We also have a Bulgarian grenade and perhaps one of the most high-tech grenades out there, this little German fella, which has a blast frag sleeve on the outside. And then if you remove that, remove the fragmentation sleeve, you then just have a blast grenade when you use for assaulting. Okay, we're in the boom boom room and as you can see behind us, they're fairly well stocked with anti-tank weapons. 
uh, everything from uh, British Enlaw to Matadors, AT4 variants, and even right here we have a captured RPG-30. Um, this is kind of an interesting weapon. Don't take my word for it, look it up online. And this is designed to defeat not only reactive armor, but also active protection systems. All right, let's go take a look outside real quick. And last but not least, we have the almost ubiquitous TM-62 anti-tank mine and its detonator. We've got a few of these here. Most of these are scheduled to be cut up into quarters in order to create demolition charges. Um, they usually just put them on a bandsaw and chop them up and then uh, throw a dead in them. That gives you a pretty big charge should you need to destroy any defenses and also sympathetically detonate any booby traps. Hope you've enjoyed the quick walkthrough. Stick around for more content on Recall TV.